Welcome to episode 66 of the BCF ORG podcast, The Business of Business. I'm Brian Fisher. In the previous episode, 65, our guest was Wendy Lindahl discussing beating procrastination. This podcast series focuses on the various subjects and topics to help you run a successful, profitable business that are approximately 10 to 15 minutes long so you can listen while commuting. Hopefully, you'll find one or two takeaways to implement per episode. Today's episode discusses maximizing performance. Our guest is Dr. Clint Ledeen, founder and owner of Successfully Coaching, who is based out of San Francisco, California. Clint Ledeen is on a mission to help leaders utilize coaching techniques to unleash the power of their teams, optimize their leadership skills, and drive performance to new heights. As a leadership success coach and former professional basketball player, Clint knows the difference between a bad coach and a good coach. A bad coach is self-focused, believes that they are the only expert, and expects you to fall in line no matter what. A good coach unlocks hidden potential, nurtures natural abilities, and encourages people to fly. To that end, he has written Power Coaching, which many are calling a must-have in their leadership toolbox. He is the owner of Successfully Coaching, a leadership coaching business whose mission is to help leaders overcome obstacles to achieving success. He has also been featured on Fox, CBS, ABC, and NBC affiliate outlets. Clint's mission began with a life-changing encounter with coaching. While in the midst of his career, he was introduced to coaching, finding it to be transformative for him, his team, and his organization. He quickly enrolled in a doctoral program to learn more about the psychology and methodology of coaching, and has since become a sought-after writer, author, and speaker of the subject of leadership coaching. Let's welcome Clint Ladeen. Clint, welcome to the BCF ORG podcast, The Business of Business. Well, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for joining us today, Clint. Clint, I'm always interested in people's stories. What's your background in becoming the founder and owner of Successfully Coaching? Well, I originally worked as a professional athlete in Europe, uh, interestingly enough, and then played basketball over in Australia and Germany. And then I started my professional corporate work shortly thereafter in San Francisco. And while I was there at this one organization in the city here, uh, they had given us the opportunity to have an executive coach. Our team, many people were a little bit reluctant to, about it. And so they offered it to me. I took it, didn't know much about it. And short story was the coaching I received was transformational for me and my organization. Uh, but let me just uh, back up first. When they first offered it to me, I, I originally thought, man, I, I don't need this coaching. At that point, I had already had my master's degree uh, with this organization. I already had five years in the industry. I was doing well. The organization was doing well. And so I thought, what could this person possibly teach me? They're not in this field. I'm already well-educated. I have the experience. Why would I need this? And as I said, I came to find out that it was just amazing. I learned so much and just reached new heights that I never thought I could personally. And then that just kind of cascaded down throughout our organization. And then that's when I said, I need to learn more about this. And so I went back to school, got my doctorate in the field of strategic leadership and executive coaching. And I just thought, man, people need to experience what I experienced. You know, the same type of thing happened with me with professional sales training. I'd been in sales for for years, technical sales and being an engineer. And I thought, well, what do I need professional sales training for? And after I took it, it was like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> you know, it opened my eyes and took me to the next level or two for sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a great, I think, life lesson for us all, right? That we always can learn some something, and, and I'll even throw it out there, from anybody, right? Adopting that kind of mindset is always helpful and I think positive. Yeah, absolutely. Well, my next question is, uh, what's the difference between limiting beliefs 
and a realistic outlook? Well, I think uh, we'll start with the the second part, the realistic outlook part as well. I think that what you need to to understand is that having that a realistic outlook doesn't mean it mean that you don't ignore problems or pretend they don't exist. It's that you acknowledge the potential difficulties and you plan accordingly. Limiting beliefs, on the other hand, we need to understand that they are simply just beliefs. They might not be facts. And what I've come across in my own life and in in coaching others is that limiting beliefs can hinder uh, our growth. It can hinder organizations. It can hinder families. And helping people understand the difference between a realistic outlook and limiting beliefs can be huge in the life of a person. And I'll share just one that I had anecdotally when I was younger. I had gone to a high school guidance counselor. And as they do, I was about sophomore year in high school. And they, you come in and they say, hey, what do you want to do with your life? And at that point, I knew what I wanted to do. I was five years old. Or I told the, the gentleman, I said, since five years old, I know that I want to play professional basketball. I knew it. Uh, it's what I wanted to do. And he began to share with me and put on what I would call some limiting beliefs. He began to say things like, hey, you know what? You come from a small town here in the Central Valley. The chances of you doing that are kind of slim to none. You're not that tall. It's very difficult uh, for somebody. Uh, you're not that athletic. The school you go to is not that big. Why don't we begin to think of something else? Now, from the outside, you might say, hey, that that guidance counselor is doing the the right thing. He's giving some, you know, a a realistic outlook. But the thing is, is that you have to be careful about couching. I think a lot of times people couch this realistic outlook because we get comfortable and we want to stay where we're at. And so I tell people, right, when you when you think about that, those limiting beliefs began to be put, power of limiting beliefs began to be put on my on my head and began to be, become part of my thought process. And it just got me thinking that how different could the conversation have been if he would have went something like this? Wow, Clint, it sounds like you know what you want to do. How can we come alongside you as adults in your life? How can we begin to get you the cognitive training you need to accomplish that amazing dream? What kind of people do we need to surround you with? What type of coaches do we need to get you with to help you accomplish something difficult and challenging and hard? Man, I believe in you. That's something I want you to do and flourish. But instead, I think because he had probably never experienced his dream or trying something different or trying something out of the box that his limiting beliefs began to be transposed on others. And so I think it's very important that when you're going through life that you kind of analyze, is this something that's true or is it just the obstacle that I can overcome? We're speaking with Clint Ledeen, founder and owner of Successfully Coaching. Clint, what are the biggest obstacles to people? This kind of builds on your previous answer, but what are the biggest obstacles to people achieving their dreams? I think a lot of times, as we just talked about, it's those limiting beliefs. So people don't even realize that those beliefs are there. They're kind of have been ingrained in their heads. Maybe they've been spoken into them when they were younger. They've never seen anybody overcome. They have an experience someone that's poured into their life. And so I would say, number one, it's limiting beliefs. The next one that I would say for people, uh, obstacle to overcoming their dreams is the persistence factor. And so a lot of times people are really used to instant gratification. And as you know, Brian, from building your business and growing teams, that persistence is a key component Uh, to achieving your dreams, right? You're going to come across obstacles. You're going to come across people that tell you why it can't be done. But the ability to persist in the face of obstacles or hurdles 
is huge. And then another thing is that it's important for people to understand that failure can be part of the process. And so that a lot of times people will come, you know, they're chasing their dreams, they're chasing this vision that they have in their heart, and they might come across a failure. Maybe they don't get the job. Maybe they get cut from a team. Maybe they have a relationship that doesn't do well, but it doesn't, but failure doesn't necessarily mean that that's a stop sign. Once again, that failure doesn't mean that you need to stop. Absolutely. And uh, failure, especially as a business owner, failure is part of the process. You just have to overcome those. And like you said, uh, persistence and tenacity go hand in hand to overcome the obstacles. Yeah, exactly. And I think in that vein, right, and you could probably uh, speak to this as well, it's not always the path that you imagine. And so you might have this vision, you might have these goals, which you need to have, but you also need to maintain some flexibility and adaptability and know that the path kind of meanders at times. And perhaps it's not always the one that you imagine. And perhaps you've seen that in, in your uh, scenario as well. It was definitely in my case, you have to be, you definitely have to be flexible and, and be open to change. Yeah. And I would say another key component to an uh, obstacle to people achieving their dreams is uh, having someone in their corner. Whether it's, you know, somebody that's cheering them on, whether it's a family member, whether it's a spouse, whether it's a mentor, whether it's a coach, somebody that's in their corner that is going to be with them through some difficult times, that's going to encourage them, that's going to celebrate the small victories, because those are huge. And somebody that's going to say, hey, you know what, pick yourself up, let's keep going, you have this dream, and I'm with you. Well, Clint, what have been the results for the people that have followed your coaching? Well, uh, I have uh, entrepreneurs that have literally, they've doubled their income. They've come to me with some roadblocks, some uh, scaling issues, and they've come to me and said, hey, I want to get to this type of revenue, and we have helped them double uh, their income. Uh, we also have working with some CEOs that have come to us and said, hey, you know what? Our culture is just not what it needs to be. You know, Brian, you and I were talking a little bit earlier about employees and staff and developing a team. And kind of like we're talking about, how can I develop an A team? How can I get people excited? How can I get them motivated and really let them excel and fly? And you were talking about the importance of, right, these, these people, these A teams being attracted to one another. And so, we work we work with CEOs to help them develop and cultivate that culture to let their A teams really fly and and then as well uh we work with sales people that are in sales and they're just running into obstacles not hitting their number and uh hey how do we get to that and we help them evoke awareness and come up with winning strategies to get to their goals boy that's the truth having five star employees and and an A team definitely makes your life a lot easier and a lot better. Yeah, yes, most definitely. If you have uh, the talent and you're able to let them run, fun things happen. Yeah, you got to give them the resources to do their job and then stand back. Yeah, and that could be, right, for some leaders we know that can be challenging uh, for them. They they want to take the credit or they want to have their hands in there. And it takes a lot of humility at times to be able to do that. We're speaking with Clint Ladine, founder and owner of Successfully Coaching. Clint, is there anything I've not asked that you'd like to add? Yeah, I just want to encourage the audience, you know, wherever they are at to keep growing, keep developing, uh, no matter where you are in your leadership journey, wherever you are in your goal journey, uh, keep moving forward. I love telling people this and it's if you take one step towards your goal uh, you are successful uh, a lot of times we expect that we have to do a million great things but if you break it down if you do one step towards your goal that success and you can build off of that how can people get in contact with you clint they can reach me at uh, the website successfullycoaching.com well, thank you for joining us today on the BCF ORG podcast, The Business of Business.
And thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. My sincere thanks to Clint Ledeen for joining us. Managing the performance of your company is one of the most important things you do as a leader. This podcast is on over 20 directories. Subscribe or follow wherever you get your podcast. In search, type BCF-ORG. Be sure to leave a space between BCF and ORG. Feel free to share this podcast with people who you think may benefit. A strong rating of these podcasts would be appreciated. If you'd like to reach out to me with any questions, comments, ideas, or potentially be a guest like Clint, please go to bcforg.com. There's a red Contact Us button in the middle of the homepage. A LinkedIn symbol's on the upper right. Click on that if you'd like to see my profile. All the podcasts are available by clicking on the website podcast page in the reference bar. These podcasts will be released the first and third Tuesday each month. In the next episode, 67, our guest will be Ira Wallace discussing the perfect labor storm. In business, running a successful, profitable business is the ultimate scorecard. You are never done and can always be better. It tends to be more fun than work, frustrating at times, but can be very rewarding. From BCF ORG Corp., I'm Brian Fisher, wishing you the best. Thanks. Thanks.